the show intro, about 10 seconds. Aloha, and welcome to another edition of Hawaii Rotary People of Action. I am so happy to introduce you to Steve Mazur today. We have the president of the Eco Rotary Club, the Rotary Eco Club of Kaka'ako, and he's going to tell us all about this fascinating new club. So we're just going to jump right in, Steve, if that's okay with you. Sure. Great. Um, uh, by the way, my name is Janet Sheffer. Again, I am the public image chair for the District 5000 for Rotary in Hawaii. And we come to you here at 10 o'clock every other Thursday morning, bringing you all the news of Rotary in Hawaii. So again, Steve, welcome. Um, please tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Great. Um, thanks for having me. Um, I grew up in, uh, well, I was born in Chicago, lived in a big city until I was very young, moved down to Florida and um, grew up close to the beach where I felt very connected to nature and the ocean. Um, in 2008, um, which is when the economy sort of tanked um, in Florida and globally, um, it was a good time to hit the reset button. I applied to the MBA program to University of Hawaii. I found out they were giving um, scholarships for business school um, at Scheidler. And so I applied. And in 2008, I moved out to Oahu. And so the first almost two years that I was here, I was a full-time business student um, completing my MBA. And right after that, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do or what I would do. Um, and I discovered uh, Revolusa and a startup solar company. They were about six months old at the time um, in, uh, with an office in Chinatown, and I ended up uh, getting into uh, commercial uh, solar development. Oh, so, especially the interest in the environment. <laughs> yeah, it, it checked all the boxes, uh, finance and business, um, but also helping, um, helping us move away from a fossil fuel-based economy. Absolutely. A very, um, very noble business to be in, and Revolution has done amazing things in our community. So I know that you're very interested in the environment in other ways, and it's entered your rotary life. We are here today to talk about this brand new, amazing concept for a rotary club. It's a topical rotary club, the Eco Rotary Club of Kaka'ako. Am I saying that right? You got it. Oh, okay. Eco Rotary Club of Kaka'ako. Steve is the current president. And it's a fascinating new concept for a club. Brand new club started recently. Please tell us the vision. Why did you begin the club? Well, we, we find, you know, a, a group of us informally were discussing the idea. And uh, Winton Showman, uh, the uh, district governor, actually had heard about this concept popping up in a few other places. Um, Rotary International has identified climate change and environmental issues um, as sort of what the next generation is going to need to focus on. It's going to be one of their biggest um, campaigns possibly ever. Um, it's the biggest thing that's facing us and, and the children that are growing up. Um, the environmental problems are getting worse despite all the efforts that are being made. So how do we... Um, how do we prioritize the um, good work that people want to do in their community? We have many options, many good causes to support. Um, this is one that um, is no longer a small little niche. It's, it's coming to the forefront. And uh, so, so that's kind of how it started. Um, you know, and when, when approached a small group of us to see if there was interest um, from people that I think he knows um, either specialize in some of these issues or are more pa passionate about it and might want to put together this club. So. And so when did you start? How many members? What's your format? How can people find out about it? And we'll talk about that later, too. OK. Well, things are still, still evolving, just like any uh, startup. Um, we, met, um, we met a few months back at Revolution's showroom. They have a community space. Um, that they provide uh, or no cost to um, nonprofits. So we started meeting there um, informally to gauge interest. And then very quickly, so we had about 40 people come through and uh, 15 people uh, 
sign up, that they're committed, they want to be part of this, uh, this new club, this new movement. Um, so that's, that's kind of how it started. And then we, we started to discuss some of the uh, local as well as global issues that we might be able to focus on. I'd love to hear more about that as well. Okay. Um, but first, tell us, when do you meet? Um, how many people? What's the, what's the goal for 2019, Rotary Year? Okay, so, so for this year, um, we really want to expand on our strategic plan, launch some new projects, as well as support some existing projects in our community, and grow our membership. That's the most, that's the most important thing to um, start with for a, a new Rotary Club. So, um, yeah, how would you like me to expand yeah. on that? Yeah, well, when do you meet? Okay, sorry, that yeah, was the first okay. part of the question. When yeah. do you meet? Yeah. So we meet at uh, 6 p.m. on Tuesdays um, at the Revolution Showroom, which is located in Salt. It's on the second floor above Moku Kitchen. So currently, we are not meeting on the third Tuesday of the month. Uh, we are meeting on the first, second, and fourth Tuesday. So hard to remember, but we are, um, we are sending emails out as well as Facebook events to promote when we are meeting in case okay. anything changes. But at this point, that's what we've established is, is Tuesdays at 6 p.m. The formal agenda goes for about an hour, and then we usually um, hang out for up to another hour after okay. uh, to socialize. So people in the community that may know nothing whatsoever about Rotary, that want to participate in your projects that are going to support um, things like global warming and environmental issues impacting Hawaii, of course, we are at the epicenter of the global warming problem. If people pay attention to uh, local news, it is a severe issue here because of our remote location in the world. So if people want to find out more, can they just walk into your Rotary Club at 6 o'clock on Tuesday at SALT? Absolutely. Um, Revolution? Can, I mean, it's such a broad, interesting topic. There's so many people interested in this. The best thing someone can do um, if they're curious and interested in getting involved in some cause, just come to a meeting. Any, all of our meetings are open to the public. Got it. Um, we welcome everyone and we encourage people to come and check it out. Um, we've more than half of, our, um, of the people that have attended a meeting so far are not familiar with Rotary, which is also something of interest to us. Strategically, it's how do we find how do we um, find a way to connect with more people in the community that uh, maybe are not familiar with Rotary, and we have a feel that's a little bit different than the traditional Rotary Club. Exactly, so. a traditional Rotary Club, as um, many of the viewers out there know, um, doesn't have a topical focus. It has um, a broad focus of community involvement, community service, and also our polio um, focus worldwide. And that's why I find this so fascinating. I've been in Rotary myself for 12 years. It's the first club I've ever heard of that is going to focus on one specific area. I can imagine that your club can have a greater impact on this issue by not only bringing it to the attention of the community, but also making an actual impact on certain projects and issues when you're really focused on the one specific issue. Yeah, that, you know, that was a question that came up. You know, so there's two parts to it. Why, why create, first of all, why use Rotary as a platform? That was a question that we had to face. Right. You know, there's, there's hundreds of very focused um, environmental groups out there um, that any volunteer could potentially be involved with, like Surfrider Foundation, Sustainable Coastlines, and many others. Sierra Club. Sierra the, Club, The list yes. goes on yes, and on and exactly. on. exactly. Um, so where does Rotary fit into that? Right. And then why have a Rotary Club that's focused? So starting with the focus part, um, you know, we find that a lot of people don't know what Rotary does, um, but they might be interested in these issues. So it's a way to attract people who might want to work on these types of projects but don't know exactly what they want to do. They want to find a group to be part of. Once they come to a meeting, then they also find out about this giant global organization working on thousands of projects all over the world, spending over $80 million a year with their foundation um, grants. They learn about this whole big network that this platform offers, 
And then we figure out how can we leverage that for the specific types of projects that we're interested in. And that's fascinating because of our grant process. You could make a terrific impact here with some of the issues facing our Hawaii um, because of the, the power of the Inter Rotary International. Um, and just as a side note, um, Rotary International is um, having their international convention this week in Hamburg, Germany, another country that is dealing with global warming issues um, head on. And uh, I think that if you go, if you've ever been to an international convention, I've been to one. Uh, our, uh, the International Convention of 2020 is going to be right here in Honolulu. That's going to be an incredible opportunity for you. But when you go to these international conventions, there are hundreds of booths from hundreds of Rotary Clubs talking about all of these projects that Steve just mentioned. And I can just imagine the Rotary Eco Club of Kaka'ako being involved on a global scale because this is so unique and could have a great impact worldwide. So I'm definitely going to be attending one of your meetings because it's very exciting. Great, we'd love to have you. It'd be great. And I know that you have specific initiatives, projects that you're exploring. Can you touch on maybe the top three or four that your, your board and your club, your members, are currently looking at engaging in in the coming year? Okay. Um, so one of the parts um, to most Rotary Clubs is to have a, you know, we have a community presence. We're the first Rotary Club in Kaka'ako. So initially, we wanted to start off and make sure that we are uh, involved in some projects in Kaka'ako. Um, Kamehameha Schools has uh, uh, provided some land in Kaka'ako Makai in partnership with Surfrider Foundation to have a community garden. And it's actually a very large space. Um, there's an organization called Permablitz that helps transform landscapes into edible landscapes. Mm. And food, uh, food is a big issue. Climate change is uh, disruptive to all agriculture. And we import most of our food here in Hawaii, even though we have this amazing climate um, and soil suitable to grow just about anything. And yet, yet we import almost all of our food. So we're supporting this community garden. It's, um, it's, they, they're meeting regularly where you can actually get your hands dirty and dig in the dirt and plant some trees. You, you end up learning a lot about gardening and you also learn about these food issues at the same time. Fantastic. And hopefully that will inspire people to invite permablitz to come out to their homes and um, plant their own edible landscapes. Fantastic. So, so that's, that was our first uh, local project that, that. that we're going to promote and support. Um, you know, the idea is that several other organizations have their own networks and they can all um, encourage them to support that project. And that's across the street from our meeting space, uh, right in front of the uh, medical school. Oh, it was burns. a big plot of land in front of a parking lot, full of weeds and full of litter, just sitting there. Perfect space uh, for this type of project, an urban edible garden. Fantastic. Uh, and I know that um, community gardens have been popping up all over the mainland. People are planting them on the rooftops in New York City and places like San Francisco. We've got a couple in um, by Kapiolani Park that I've seen. It's incredible. We'll have something in the urban core, and it's going to be seen right from the highway. Mm. So this is something I would be very interested in as an avid gardener myself. Okay. So we're going to take a short break. I want to hear a little bit more about all the wonderful projects you're going to engage in for next year. And so... Um, We'll be back with Steve Mazur from Rotary in Hawaii, People of Action, in a few minutes. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Hey, Aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, 
We want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Welcome back to Hawaii Rotary People of Action. I'm joined here today by Steve Mazur of the Rotary Eco Club of Kaka'ako. We are learning all about the projects that the club is going to be embarking on in the, in the coming year. It's a brand new club. He will tell you all about how you can find out more about it if you're interested in things like global warming, and all of the issues facing our environment and our world environment, um, and basically have the opportunity to take action on this, just like people of action in Rotary. So welcome back, Steve. Thank you. Um, we were asking Steve before the break to talk about his projects. He talked about the community garden. I'm an avid gardener. I am fascinated by this. I would love to be able to go, go do some gardening on my lunch hour in downtown Honolulu. What other projects does the club look like they're going to be embarking on in the coming year or years, Steve? Um, so one of the reasons why, why our, our members took an interest in using the Rotary platform is the opportunity um, to tap into a global network and do projects abroad. Um, especially a lot of our uh, younger members. We have a member as young as 21 who love to do uh, mission trips and, and travel to other countries. And Rotary is excellent for that um, access to global grants uh, to fund projects that we can do overseas. And then there's uh, Rotary Clubs in other countries. So one of the biggest issues um, that the world is dealing with is single-use plastic as well as other types of marine debris, plastic marine debris from commercial fisheries um, all over the world, um, litter going into the rivers um, in, all over the world. And we know about it in Hawaii because it, tens of thousands of pounds of it wash up on all of our beautiful beaches um, every year and organizations are weighing it. We know, we know that we're filling up dumpster loads of plastic and we know that most of it is coming from all over the world. So we're looking at um, where we're putting together a project um, potentially in Southeast Asia um, to help work in local communities out there where um, there's, I believe there's about five rivers that uh, account for the majority of the marine debris entering our ocean every day. So it's a small number of rivers um, in countries that lack the infrastructure. Um, and, and places like Bali and other places in China and Southeast Asia, they, they have an opportunity to leapfrog the developed world and go from having no waste management to a zero waste uh, format. So right now, uh, we're putting together plans uh, for a proposal to work on a project overseas. And when you say Southeast Asia, are we talking the Philippines? What part of Southeast Asia are we referring to? That so the Philippines is one and Indonesia is another. Okay. But um, depending, on, uh, depending on the partners that we establish in, in those places, we'll, might shape where, if we want to start uh, start the project in one location in one small community, or if we want to do something bigger uh, through the uh, global rotary network. So I have an interest in this as a sailor with a boat who cleans the debris around our boat in the Alawai regularly, and we see it washing down from the mountain streams, uh, basically litter, um, people littering plastic, and we even see the impact on marine life with turtles and whales and dolphins here. Can you talk a little bit about the global problem with this, a little bit more specifically? What is the actual impact of this debris in our oceans, if you, if you would? Sure. So if you go out and troll for fish and you catch an ono or a mahi-mahi or any of our favorite fish that we eat, it's almost 100% guaranteed that you will find traces of microplastic in every single fish. Um, and that was the aha moment for me. I think that was about eight years ago that a research vessel um, came into Oahu. They had some fresh fish that they had caught on their way. And they just picked a fish out of the cooler, filleted it, opened the gut up, and said, I guarantee we'll find microplastic. And they did. 
And they knew for sure that they would before they had opened this fish up. So at that point, I realized, okay, this, this is scary because what it's in our, it's in our, um, it's in our, it's in the food chain. Food um, it's in our food source, and and so that's one of the issues. Um, the, not only the collapse of the fisheries from overfishing, but the the fact that plastic is choking so much marine life. Um, so that's one of the major major issues. Um, another issue is the marine debris um, is damaging infrastructure. It's washing up on all of our beaches. Um, but the microplastic issue is one of the scariest things. It's threatening all seabirds globally. Um, we're finding it in 100% of birds that are marine you know, seabirds on the northwestern islands. If you open up any, if you find any dead bird, you will find plastic um, inside. And that's just what we're finding on the surface. We don't even know how much plastic has made its way to the bottom of the ocean. And um, in Hawaii as a sailor, we're aware of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, um, which is a, an area the si larger than the size of Texas. So um, we have friends that sail between the mainland and Hawaii. And one of the most important things is to not hit debris. Because if they hit debris, sailing at 20 knots or 10 knots, it can damage your rudder. It can cause all kinds of problems, but it's just everywhere. And it's just becoming a magnanimous problem for, especially for those of us that live in the islands. So it's just wonderful that you folks are taking this issue head on and actually trying to make some sort of an impact um, locally first and then taking it globally. So if you are interested in helping with this issue, you need to reach out to Steve. Um, who is available on Facebook, Rotary Eco Club of Kaka'ako. Um, he is also available, um, uh, uh, the website's not quite up yet. The club just started in March, but you can find them easily on Facebook. So let's talk about um, your club specifically. I know we touched on this a little bit earlier, but the purpose of the club is to be able to um, do projects locally and also internationally um, about the um, ecological systems of our world. Um, you're starting with the community garden and then you're gonna be looking at other opportunities. What is the process the club is gonna to use to identify future projects? What are some of the big, big ideas that maybe you don't have materialized yet, but that you'd like to tackle as a club? Great. Yeah. So we, we, we have formed a group of um, uh, members with various backgrounds um, and experiences, and we're putting that together um, as we develop our strategic plan. Um, where do we want to see the world in 5, 10, or 20 years? And we start from there, and we work our way backwards to what are the specific um, uh, projects that we need to do immediately, locally, and globally. So we sort of work backwards from a very high level vision. Um, we're looking for new members who want to focus on um, either various projects, uh, membership, um, fundraising. So there's multiple um, things that people can gain experience in, which is useful for their professional lives. Um, and that's attracting a lot of our younger members as well. Um, and and then our, our general structure, we have, we have an executive committee um, and then uh, different campaign leaders. Um, and we're, we're still looking for new leadership to come in and help us with, with these different parts. I wonder if I can be a member of two Rotary Clubs. I think you can't. I, I think you can't. <laughs> but the thing about but, Rotary is we all end up helping each other and collaborating. We, you could do visiting. Um, yeah. I could do visiting uh, trips to your club, but mostly we can support each other's projects by just showing up at the community gardens or, exactly. or what have you. I, I just think it's fascinating. I find it incredible that a group of younger Rotarians are tackling this project head on, this, this problem head on in Hawaii from a Rotary perspective, which um, our four-way test of, uh, you know, being open and honest and giving and helpful really applies to all of the areas of your club. So I wish you great luck with this club. I look forward to coming out to the garden. When does the garden project begin? 
So the garden, um, the garden is organizers are hosting um, events. I think they're having a community day monthly at this oh. point, oh. Um, and they're also um, promoting those on Facebook. So you can check with Surf Rider Foundation, Oahu, or Perma Blitz, two yes, of the big Perma organizations. Can yeah. you spell that? Perma Blitz. Perma Blitz. Blitz, like Blitz. A Blitz, where an Perma army Blitz. shows up and tackles a problem Perma. together. Very good. Yeah. Very good. So again, um, I want to invite you to check out the Eco Rotary Club of Kaka'ako. They meet every Tuesday. Steve Mazur here is the president. He is inviting you to find out more about the club. You can find him on Facebook. You can find him every Tuesday, except the third Tuesday of every month, at the Revolution um, Showroom at the second level of Salt, right above Moku's Kitchen, which we all know and love. So I will be checking you out very, very soon. Um, I want to bring you folks out there up to date on um, what's going on with Rotary worldwide. Uh, of course, this week, um, thirty to 40,000 Rotarians are meeting in Hamburg, Germany, for their annual Rotary International Conference. We have lots of local Rotarians there. And I'm sure that um, you're all aware, because I've talked about it in the past, that next year uh, we're meeting at the Convention Center. The Rotary International Convention will be here for the first time since the 1960s. 30,000 Rotarians approximately will be descending on the shores of Hawaii. And there are opportunities that will amaze you. I happen to be working on the sponsorship committee because I'm a marketing person. And so if you are by any chance a company out there or a person that wants to be involved in the Rotary Convention next year, reaching a global audience, you can contact me and I'm going to give you my phone number for my company, which is 521-1160, Mana Means Communications. You can reach out to me to find out more about sponsorship opportunities for the 2020 Rotary International Convention, which we're all so excited about. So we have a little bit of time left, Steve. Do you have anything else you can add about the club that you didn't get to cover? Okay, well, I, I hope that everyone comes out to visit and um, you will find a great group of your new best friends. <laughs> um, it's a very much a, a social organization where we enjoy um, working on these issues together. And I think that's what keeps people coming back. And so I just encourage everyone to come see for yourself. We're very welcoming. Um, come to a meeting and bring your ideas, bring your energy. And uh, we look forward to meeting you. Exactly. If you are someone out there that has a great idea for the environment, this is a platform, this is a place that you could share that, run it by the committees, and find out if this club would be able to help you accomplish um, taking on that project or initiative. So that's a, that's a wonderful opportunity. So we're going to sign off. I want to thank you very much, Steve, for being with me today. And uh, don't forget the Eco Rotary Club of Kaka'ako Tuesday nights at SALT, 6 p.m. Be there, except the third Tuesday. I am Janet Sheffer, your public image chair for Rotary District 5000. And I am so happy you joined us here today on Think Tech Hawaii. We will see you here again in two weeks for another edition of Hawaii Rotary, People of Action. Mahalo.